Hello once again, all you lovely people out there in the land of the tube of views. It's me, that gaming nerd John, and we are making solid progress through Citizen Sleeper. Like, oh my god. <laughs> it's kind of wild. Um, yeah, JC here with me still, along every step of this journey that we've been making. Um, timers are ticking down. We've got a couple of things that are going to be hitting us like soon. Bad timers yeah, so these are all just good timers, man. Yeah, we're just yeah, in the good There's about one neutral timer. Uh, yeah, fair enough. I think uh, What's Her Nuts, yeah, uh, Rabaya, one. is going to be uh, an interesting one. Yeah. Um, no, nothing that. Nothing that's like shoot, shoot, kill you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This At is the good. moment. Uh, <laughs> correct. Like, our list is actually, like, smaller? Yeah, it what? is. What? It's wild, man. Um, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, okay. So I think we're good for today. Look at all of these options. Where am I? There I am. Yeah, we just need to... Like, I'd feel better if I could figure out where the heck we're going to get another ship mine core. It might be one of those things where we have to wait for the freighter to leave and come back. Oh Excuse my me. god! What? <laughs> what? Um, okay. What? Seriously? Let's, uh... Let's go check that freighter real quick. Just, just in case. Nope. Okay, it is yeah. locked until it Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, like, we are locked out. So we can't get any more from there. The Overlook bar was just food, right? No, Overlook regular. Oh. We need one more. I am thinking rations gets yeah. us two. Sure. Because we got money. Not a whole large amount. Excuse me? Uh, you have to actually buy a drink. That's fine. That'll get us up to max. Not exactly efficient, but yeah, it's fine. Overlook. A favored haunt for spacers. The glass shatters on the steel bar beside you, and the taunts don't take long to follow. Hey, haunt! The spacer calls across the low room. What are you doing here? He laughs at his own lame joke. Playing human? Yeah, it's... I'm just gonna ignore him. Yeah. You hunch a little further, staring at the hundreds of tiny impact points that scar the bar's surface. A hand falls on your shoulder, but as you flinch away, it pats reassuringly. You freeze in place. Out. The voice comes from behind you. Spat out like a shot. You turn to see bright eyes, dark hair. A stare that could breach the wall and vent you all into hard a vacuum. As you turn back to the spacer, the second glass comes sailing through the air. Oh, yeah, we're going to catch that. Boop. Oh. Or not. Oof. You reach up a hand and the glass shatters across your forearm, showering you in fragments. Through the haze of glass and jerol vapor, you see Tala leap the bar and close the distance to the spacer. <coughs> the thud as he slams into the wall echoes around the bar like thunder. Ah! New waifu. Got it. <laughs> I'm already in love. Now flanked by other figures, quick to their feet, Tala throws the spacer out through the door and stands silhouetted against the rotunda lights. You touch your arm and it <coughs> feels wet. Someone helps you to your feet and back onto your stool. Broken glass rattles as it is cleared, and a fresh measure of Jerol is glugged out in front of you. That same hand, warm, heavy, falls on your shoulder once more. He isn't coming back. We don't tolerate that kind of shit here. Tala flops onto the stool beside you. Let's get a look at you. Tala wipes the powdered glass from around the wound, and someone places a bottle of alcohol and a metal tin with tweezers on the bar. She disinfects them and then turns to you. That was an ambitious catch, she smiles, pulling a sliver of glass from your forearm. Stupid, but ambitious. You don't feel the pain. Only the string of status messages your body delivers concerning dermal damage and exposed structures. You do feel the care, though. As Tala's bright eyes search your thick, synthetic skin for splinters. Watch her. Tala works with the skill of someone who has had to pick glass splinters from the skin of a stranger before. She hones in on each bright shard, all the time tapping the tweezers' tips in little rhythms that only she can follow. Tala smiles for herself. So, you been on the eye long? <laughs> long enough. Yeah. She laughs. Hey, you don't need to act that tough with me. A splinter clinks into the tin. 
Not everyone is like that, idiot. We don't all hate you. She glances around. Some of the regulars. Maybe they fear you. Maybe they're just curious. I don't know. But I do know that the Overlook is a safe place. I know what it's like to be new in this place. Trust me. She meets her eye. I'm not trying to convince you of anything or separate you from your chits. I just want you to know that if you need somewhere, you can always come here. I know the rations we got aren't much, and the company is, she leans in, limited. But if you need work, I'll happily put you behind the bar, and if you need shelter, well, we can discuss that. You'll be safe. I usually have Francis on the door, but he's up in the greenway this cycle, haggling with our supplier. Francis tends to be particular about what we serve, even if the clientele isn't. She places her tweezers in the tin with a clink. That's you, sleeper. Here. She slides the glass as roll to you. This will help. She stops, her hands still on the glass. Wait, does this help? I mean, can you get drunk? <laughs> <clears throat> Let's find out. She laughs. Just don't sit here too long. I'd hate to see you become a real regular. She walks back around the bar, gathering the glasses as she does, and before long is retelling how she threw that spacer out to a new group that just wandered in, complete with dramatic actions. She gestures in your direction, and you instinctively look away, back to the worn surface of the bar. You take a sip of the jerome. The earthy, fungal tones fill your senses, almost blocking out sight and sound like diving headfirst into a bog. You may not be able to get drunk, but this connection to something grown, something fermented, something old feels good okay so we haven't unlocked that in like ever yeah oh well you look at that hey. this can get us money and hey. it works towards something yeah okay but first uh, let's just see what else we need is yeah. there anything else going on uh, uh there, yes. yes her uh the event that's preventing us <clears> from going to sleep Yes. Yep. Her. Mm -hmm. All right. As you approach the address Rabia gave you, a heavy hand falls on your shoulder. What's your business here? The enforcer grips your shoulder, giving a hint of the strength her implants gave her. As you turn, you see the same subsidiary eyes as Rabia and Toshiro, glinting like mirrors on her cheeks. Gia, please. The sleeper is here by my invitation. At Rabia's command, the hand immediately loosens, and an apologetic look replaces the scowl on Gia's face. Of course, Rabia. I'm sorry. Rabia waves her away. Don't you worry, I appreciate your protective instincts. She smiles at the enforcer. How about you head to the tambour? They have a delivery coming, and they'll need some help with the lifting. Gia nods and walks away. So, sleeper, you came. I'm glad. That feels really snarky. It does. <clears throat> I've repeatedly stated that our character, as being played, is curious by nature. I was curious. And just straight up here. Uh, chill. Yeah. Curious is good. She smiles a tight smile. You have to understand, finding you there in Sabine's unit, I wasn't sure where we stood. There are more than a few people on this station who would rather I was dead. I had to be sure you weren't one of them. I wish you no harm. I am glad. Rabio begins walking and gestures for you to walk with her. She takes you down a staircase into the bustling walkways of the low end. What do you know about Yadigan? You are a gang. Mm. A gang, yes. That is what people call us. But what meaning does that word have in this place? People with carts push past moving crates of supplies around the thin and winding passages. Our reputation is one that implies threat. Is that fair to say? We're framed as aggressors, parasites, criminals. She gestures around at the people in the passageway. But when was the last time you saw a lawmaker on the eye? A policeman? Who makes the laws here? Erlen did! Technically true. Yeah. Technically true, and I feel like we'd be technically true. Yeah. Indeed. You understand the history, then. That is good. But Erlin is long dead, sleeper. And his rules were little more than an optimist's manifesto. The eye has changed so much since then. 
If you had spent your time in the low end, maybe your opinion of us would be different. This is our place, our people. The low end was empty in Erlen's time. They didn't need to house thousands, and keeping the yards and the rotunda safe was work enough. No, the low end was reclaimed later, when the refugees started arriving. Rabia meets her eye. The collapse didn't just happen here, on this station. When Solheim collapsed, the entire system felt it. Colonies were abandoned. The moons of Ember and Cinder suddenly gained independence overnight. Some took advantage. Some tried to hold it together. Some fled. The Eye became a refuge, and Erlen, to his credit, extended an open <coughs> hand to everyone. But many within his organization disagreed, and those new arrivals weren't as simple to corral as they hoped. Rabia leads you through a small market hall, busy with small stalls and traders. Erlen's union was made of workers, administrators, people who were malleable and already organized into hierarchies and networks. The refugees came from different factions and families, were scared, injured, desperate. Conflict was inevitable. Yadigan is a child of that conflict, a child born out of the need for us to stand up and claim our future, to provide security, strength. People call us a gang, but we are a community. I take my position as lieutenant seriously, and from my birth, I have worked to earn it. Rabia catches herself before she raises her voice any further, and you both walk in silence for a while, among the smells and textures of the low end. You start to wonder if this place could be a home for you, too. Where do I come into this? Rabia smiles to herself and thinks for a moment before she responds. I believe that you understand the importance of a refuge, so I also believe that you wish to help keep this place safe. She exhales quietly. For this reason, I would like you to trust me. I do not know what Sabine told you about us, but I imagine it was not good. I'll be honest with you, sleeper. I was never comfortable with having Sabine as part of Yadigan. An ex-corporate employee? It goes against our nature. But their deal was with Yannick. I kept my distance. Made sure Sabine had their surgery. Kept it supplied. That was all. But I cannot allow people to go back on the promises they have made to us. Yadigan has not lasted this long because it is a charity. We offer and ask for support. Any betrayal will be treated as an attack. Like, I am curious about who Yannick is. Mm. But I also want to defend Sibi. Yeah. Because they, they, like, hooked us up. Ugh. Ugh. You know what? Inquisitive. This might circle back. Because if we can take Yannick out of the picture, Sabine might still want to help. Yep. Yannick is one of the heads of Yannick Yadigan. They guide us. He is the newest to be elected. He is an elder. Sabine found something. Please, I don't want to hear their accusations. They only wanted to escape their debt. They would have said anything. But where are they now to stand behind their claims? I will find them. As will we. You realize that Rabia has led you in a loop. And together you both come back up a staircase to the walkway where you met. You are free to go, sleeper. I have said what I wish to say. She looks out through the windows of the walkway. I would protect this place with my life, as it has protected me. I want to make that clear. She turns back. However, if you too wish to come under its protection, I can help you. Return here if you wish, and there will be tasks for you to complete. You will be able to see Yadikin, to see the low end, with your own eyes. Not as others frame us. As for Sabine, she pauses to consider her words. I will not ask you to betray them, but if they contact you again, consider their motivations carefully. With that, Rabia leaves, slipping back into her office while you stare out at the countless units, each a home, each with a story, that make up the low end. Which also happens to include our sick, repaired house! Anyway, 
New drive discovered, huh? Never would have guessed. Shit. What has she got? Collect tithes? Patrol the ward. Well, I'm kind of leaning towards that one. Because that would get a scrap. But that's yeah. just me. Also, wow, did you see that? That is a lot. Yeah. It's like 12. Yikes. Okay. Anyway, uh, let's check upstairs. I say upstairs. Let's check <laughs> up. One more. One more. Dang it. All right, that's fine. Back down. First floor. Women's apparel. Uh, farm stacks. Yeah, no, we're good. Well, we're done. That's sick, right. sick, 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 sick. All right. Yeah, I mean, we might as well, right? Yeah. Grab it! Hey, we got one. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, that's what we needed, too. Do we want to just go ahead and get another one? Like, what? Why wouldn't we, right? Yeah. Right? I mean, that makes sense to me. Yeah, why yeah. not? Mushrooms. Shrooms! Hey, lady! <laughs> and the nice thing is, is that we still have a spare one in case our boy Emphis needs it. Yep. Rico wants to share her findings with you and seems even more excited than before. Sure! Rico is at her bench, running small vials of some liquid through an old chemical analysis machine. The whirring of the spinning drums fills the lab with white noise, and you aren't sure if she notices you approach. Sleeper, it's good to see you. She looks up, smiling. This little project of ours has been keeping me awake the past few cycles. But right now, well, I think I have something. Ooh, I do want to say that as me. But I am curious. What is it? The drum finishes spinning, and Rico lifts a vial from it, holding it up to the light. This is something I extracted from those club heads you've been bringing me, and according to my analysis, it is a substance totally unique on the Greenway. You look at the small amount of liquid in the vial. Any idea what it might be? Rico asks without looking away from the vial. Stabilizer. Yeah. Rico nods. You aren't the first sleeper to come through here. Perhaps I should have mentioned that earlier. Rico's tone suddenly drops, changing the atmosphere in the lab immediately. I just thought... She pauses, thinking very carefully of how to continue. I just wanted you to trust us. What do you mean? She sighs. They came through a fair few cycles ago. We found them wandering in the broken section near the gap. The members who brought them in had never seen one of you before. They were terrified of this strange person wandering in from open vacuum. They were quieter than you and damaged. We did our best to patch them up and welcome them to the commune. I only really spoke to them once while I was working on their wounds along with a couple of systems engineers. She looks nervously at you. I'd never seen a body like that before. I took some readings, some samples. <laughs> samples? You have to understand, I was curious. I didn't know what I was looking at. I just took a little of the damaged material, less than a thumbnail. She shifts her weight to her crutch. The next cycle, they were gone. They took a little food and hiked up toward the wild margins where the greenway meets the wastes. Someone saw them in the distance, but that was it. They disappeared into the overgrowth. She sits down heavily, the vial in her hand. When I saw you, I wanted things to be different. I wanted to keep you here rather than let you disappear into wherever they ended up. She smiles for herself. Yes, I wanted to understand this place better, but I also wanted to help you. It seems that somehow, both my wishes have come true at once. She holds out a hand with the vial. This is for you. You take the stabilizer, the glass cold and smooth in your palm. How? 
Those club head caps made it for you. Or at least, who or whatever made those club heads. She started to clear her bench. It was right there, contained in their tissue. I only had to extract it. I imagine you understand how incredible that is. I learned enough from that sleeper to know that your body, your frame, is it? Runs on some exotic technology. Exotic technology that has a time limit built in. Somehow, the Greenway knows that too. It understands your physiology much better than I ever could. It knows how to treat you. Just like that miraculous antidote that sprung from the mold, so too has this sprung from your presence here. The Greenway is speaking to you. It is welcoming you. She looks up. I know it sounds crazy, but I know it to be true. Here's the evidence. And what I also know is it is no longer speaking to me. Even after decades here, I have never seen this kind of response. Not since the antidote so many cycles ago. She smiles. So I'm going to make you a deal. You bring me as many club heads as you like. I'll extract the stabilizer and give it to you freely. But you have to tell me what the Greenway says. You have to speak with it. To dig into it. To find what being is at the center of it. I've traveled as far as I can. I need you to do the rest. Can you do that? <laughs> yes. Rico sighs with relief and deflates into her chair. Thank you. I'm sorry for the other sleeper. Truly, I am. I'm sorry I couldn't have done more, but I'm so glad I met you. She smiles. You're welcome here anytime. Rico falls silent. She looks smaller now, more fragile and you realize how old she must be to have seen the collapse firsthand. You idle a little in the lab in case she asks for anything else, but she remains silent, and so you drift back into the tunnel, thoughts of that other sleeper, and where they ended up weighing on your mind. Upgrade point. That's two. We could get self-repair, I, I guess. I don't know. That's a few. I feel like saving it to get, start getting plus twos. Yeah. Like, I'm just not impressed by... I'm sorry, what? Huh? Wahoo! Only two? That's huge! Oh my god! <gasps> oh! 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 Finally! A place to put the damn thing! The only way to understand what Gardner gave you is to grow it. Rico is incredibly excited by the prospect. Let's go. I'll take good care of it, sleeper. Rico smiles. Don't you worry. Neutral outcome! Question mark, question mark, question mark! My favorite! <sighs> Shit! Yeah. How long? Damn! Okay, this. Yeah, the seed is planted, and Rico is an attentive mother to what future is forming there. That's going to be huge. That's our next story. Oh milestone. my god, so the, the commune has paid off. Big time. Like, we get so much energy, we got a place, we got stabilizer for days. Stabilizer forever. Like, it's, like it's, it's, it's literally... Not even worth it for us to give money to Yadigan at this point. Yeah, it like isn't. we can literally just throw dice at this. Yeah. Wait, what four turns? Yeah. So as long as we're not complete idiots, we're fine. And we already have two. So we already have two stabilizer <laughs> as is. Like, do we wait? Oh no, no totally. We wait. Go as, <sighs> go as far as we can with this. I mean, I guess. I mean, because we I, get I, two dice. Yeah, we get two dice all the way to the end. And like we as really long don't... as we're just not stupid and forget to push the button. Yeah, I mean, yeah. God, I hate the fact that I sold that shit behind. Uh, I know that is killing me right now. We had one, but basically, we literally like, literally had one. This is amazing. I would say the way I'm looking at it right now is like, no tracker. Yeah, we we've reported to the main company that we're you know, dead. We're just dead. Do not bother. Yeah. Um. Unlimited stabilizer, unlimited energy. We literally could live here now. <laughs> yeah, for real. For real. I'm gonna cat. I'm gonna just cat once. 
Just once. Yeah. That's fine. Oh, you know what? I didn't check on uh, Emphis. I just realized. What's Emphis got now? Mm. Oh, it's literally just Fungus yeah. Order. We're, I think we finished his storyline. Pretty much. At this I don't... Point. Like, unless there's nothing it, Unless more. it activates again after we do a few orders. Yeah. I mean, it's possible. But, like, we don't need yeah. the orders right now. Word exchange? No, that was just playing the exchange and selling components. Damn. Like, Damn. holy crap. Yeah, so, like, we could work here to get further on this. Yeah. We've got the Ambergris, which we need to deliver a ship mine to. That is gonna go away in two more turns and then we're gonna have to wait I think it's usually four turns four turns for that to come back Yeah. so, so it's gonna be like eight turns before we can even get a ship mine yeah. I, I feel pretty good holy freaking crap We I, I thought we were in the end game but I think we just cracked this bad boy open <laughs> it just became open world <laughs> yeah Oh, okay, this was like our first bad roll okay. in a long time. Yeah, seriously. Like... Oh, oh, boop. Oh. Hop. Moritz, Bliss's assistant. Hey. hey. A quiet voice greets you as you leave. Sleeper, it's me. And we actually get to Sleeper. see them. Sleeper, 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 sleeper. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, don't, ignore the fact that, you know, we're in a completely different house this time. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, hello? Push button. I think, I think it's, like, stuck. <laughs> Just, um. Can you push button? I don't know what's Just, going just on. <laughs> Who? <laughs> Moritz. He pauses. I work for Bliss. He runs the back of his head. You are not an easy person to find. I don't really... Okay, it fixed itself. Yeah. I don't really have an address. <laughs> Moritz holds up his hands. Hey, no judgment. It's cool. You both stand there for a moment, <laughs> each waiting for the other to speak. So... So... Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, uh, Bliss needs you. A uh, job is coming in. A real big one. She's asking for you to come up and help her out. He nods sagely. I'll be right there. Nice, yeah. Ward stands there for a little while, unsure if the message is delivered. We are done. Alright, no need to be like that. He rubs his hands together before burying them in his jacket pockets. See you, sleeper. Moritz ambles off down the corridor, kicking at a filter cap on his way out. Time to head to Bliss's Bay, then. And with that, I think we're good. Yeah. Um... Damn. Yeah, we really we really have cracked this thing open, man. Yeah. Like, it's kind of wild. Honestly, like, we don't even need to worry about Stabilizer. I never thought I would say that. Yeah, seriously. Um, like, it's, it is still time. And, like, it has to be planned accordingly. Yeah. But, like, it's not hard to do. Like, we have multiple ways of getting energy. We can actually get scrap components now. Yeah. Like, there's multiple avenues of approach for this. This is cool. I'll, I'll wait to go up there. Yeah. Um, dang. We've even got upgrade points to spare. I could technically, technically get self-repair, but I'm, I still don't think it's that good. Um, but it is on the way to the plus two for it. Though. It is, yeah. You're not wrong. Uh, we've made pretty good side progress on things. Feels good. Yeah. This is, this is crazy. All right. I'm digging it, man. Yeah. Like, we're, we're seeing new NPCs. Uh, we're not dead. <laughs> yeah. So many good things happening. Um, and you know what? If you want to keep more good things happening in your life, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, as well as that bell notification, so that YouTube will tell you when further progress and good things happen. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you are enjoying, and as always... Until next time, take it easy. I'm going to go back to bed. Dang it!